Okay, great. Hello there. Chapter 4, depreciation. Nice little topic, depreciation, really. Um, three methods of depreciation. Now, before I, I'll talk about the methods before I talk about what depreciation actually is. So we have what we call the straight line method. You should have seen this before, hopefully from watching the first set of videos. The reducing balance method or the diminishing <coughs> returns. Um, I think I always tend to say reducing balance. Yes, the re di diminishing balance, diminishing balance um, method or reducing balance. I, I don't know. That's just old school. I like that. And the, the third one, which is kind of new even for me, to be honest, um, based on the number of units. So the usage, almost saying that you know, the more the more that you're using, if you like, then the more. So for example, it's kind of like um, current current activity divided by expected activity. Current activity, and that kind of makes sense over expected activity. So the greater the activity, then the greater the depreciation. Now, what is depreciation? Depreciation is pretty much um, an accruals concept. When I say an accruals concept, this is the first time I mentioned this as well, accruals concept. The concept is that it is impossible in finance to make money without having a cost. So, I'll give the classic example. I mean, I've used it before, the moped. This is how I draw my moped. I can't do anything better. If you're using a moped, totally electric, no real costs, no fuel to do deliveries, and you're getting income. Say, for example, you get £10,000 in a year, but the moped costs you £5,000. <clears> so you have, technically, when you think of costs or, or gross profit, you like to think, oh, I've got some revenue here, I had some costs, and then I had my gross profit. But here, you don't actually have any physical costs. It's a service. So how have you generated 10000 By using your moped. By using your moped. So in effect, by selling off your moped in bits. If your moped was going to last for 10 years, then your moped technically um, is you're selling off 10% of your moped every single year, which is £500. So I'm going to put 10 years. So £5,000. So your moped falls in value, falls in value, depreciation, falls in value by £500 every year. So the cost of using your moped, we map against the revenue, giving us the gross profit, which is revenue minus gross profit. So depreciation is the fall in value, yes, but at the same time, depreciation is our attempt to recognize a relevant, corresponding, matching cost to revenue in that period. Right? And that's kind of where I want you to go with this, not just about fall in value. And that's quite lame man kind of general speak. The key point is we must bring in our understanding, show our understanding of the accounting concept when discussing this question of depreciation. So again, now that we know that, the question is, well, we have several methods. We just say, well, it could be the same thing every single year. So we say straight line, right? We say straight line method. So for example, something's 10,000. Um, it's going to be depreciated over 10 years. So we have 10,000 over 10, and that's 1,000 pounds a year. And that's our depreciation, a thousand pounds done, um, and so we say it falls in value every single year. <clears throat> or we say it's reducing balance methods, and so if you look at it, it says that what we do is we 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 argue that it falls in value quite a lot over its initial life. So we're saying, oh, ten thousand pounds. If we're going to go ten percent reducing balance, we're going to say, okay, take off ten percent first. That's a thousand. Then we have nine thousand. Then we say take ten percent. So depreciation for the first year is a thousand. Yes. And then it's 9,000 in the next year. Then now take 10% of this 9,000. So that's 900. And then you can see what I'm doing, right? Then I take them ahead of 800. So you can see the depreciation itself falling over the years because I'm looking for a method that recognizes that this asset is used quite a bit in the first year. Great. And that's kind of the difference between both methods. Right. The next thing I want to talk about very quickly is what's referred to as accumulates depreciation. So here we are. Say, so for example, we have if you like an asset, say they go with our cost. Let's go with this 10% um, straight line method. That's the cost. And this thing depreciates £10,000 over 10 years, giving us £1,000 a year. So what do we have? We have 10000 here, and we have depreciation. So depreciation for the year, 1000 Now, of course, it makes sense for me to put £1,000 in here, because I, then I'll know what the net book value is. But if I don't, I create another account, a sister account, referred to as accumulated depreciation or provision for depreciation, if you like. And I'll put a thousand pounds here as well. Now, the reason I do this is because, I mean, not just for um, clarity, not just for auditors, just for understanding. So we can see, if, if you put the one thousand here, you limit our understanding to just what, what you call the asset as net book value. At least now we know what you paid for it. This is much more objective. I can see an invoice. 
I see the thousand, I, much more objective. I can see your process, I can see your calculation, I can see the percentage, I can work it out for myself. A thousand over that, I know it's 10%. So we do it this way, and we keep these two accounts in the statement of financial position to, to keep this going. So this gets transferred to the income statement. That's done for the first year. For the next year, what do we have? Depreciation again, another thousand. So we go debit depreciation, and we also credit again this provision. So now, at the end of the second year, I now have this carry down figure of 2,000. Of course I do, don't I? Because at the end of the second year, your cost is 10,000, and the accumulated depreciation is 2,000, because your asset is worth 8,000 at the end of the second year. And you just keep going. So your accumulated depreciation is a buildup of all the depreciation figures that would have been in here, year on year, but we just keep it in this completely separate, separate account. And that is the gist of, of chapter four. But the key point really being of chapter four is that um, we want to make sure that we choose a method that's suitable for the asset in question because accounts have to be four things. Accounts have to be relevant. What's going on over here? Accounts. Um, accounts have to be relevant. Accounts have to be reliable. A set of financial statements have to be understandable. And a set of financial ha accounts have to be comparable. So if they have to satisfy all these four things, it only makes sense in terms of being reliable that I choose a depreciation method that recognizes, if you like, the usage of the asset in question. Okay, great stuff. That's the end of that, and I will see you in Chapter 5.